our agenda is about uh, Adobe's view on accessibility and the work of the accessibility team. Much of what you heard in Peter's presentation is going to be repeated in terms of as a corporation. Oh, excuse me, I must stay in the light. Let me turn this over, my own accessibility issues. Um, I'll be looking backwards, I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, a bit about the accessibility team, which is similar to what you heard in Peter's presentation from an IBM perspective, this will be from the Adobe perspective. And how we are trying to support the efforts of authors and developers in the production of accessible content, as well as supporting persons with disabilities who want to use those tools. Now, I want to immediately say that not every one of our tools is accessible entirely to people with disabilities. Photoshop for the blind is not something we've achieved yet. However, <laughs> However, there are blind users of Photoshop, people in the technical arenas who do um, color correction or color balancing that can use the data that is revealed in those dialogues can use products like Photoshop. So one thing I've learned, let's not make assumptions. We're going to talk about how we comply with standards uh, for accessibility and how we work with the assistive technology vendors support for a variety of different formats. Yes, we are responsible for Flash, and we hope uh, that attempts to kill it are <laughs> um, going to go slowly, but we also support other formats, including, I want to say, HTML5, PDF, XML, and others, as you will see, and some information about additional resources. So what is uh, the, uh, our view on accessibility? I'm just going to build a slide entirely. From our perspective, it has two components. There is how can people with disabilities use the tools and how can people with disabilities consume the content that those tools produce. But there, this, there's one thing to understand. Accessibility is not a feature. It really is a method of best practices. And to the extent that a vendor such as Adobe can put the, the, the features in the products that can support these best practices, I, I liked what Michael Cooper had said. HTML is highly accessible, but it's only as accessible as what the designers of that code are going, what features the designers of that code are going to employ in HTML. The same goes for the various design tools Adobe publishes. So unfortunately, I've, I've yet to find this keyboard. Th that accessibility button that makes everything happen automatically does not yet exist. We do need to, in addition to automated testing, use the human testing. Uh, that, that point was made earlier today. So the fact that all of the people from different organizations, different walks of life seem to be in agreement today should reinforce any thoughts you've had about accessibility. Verif verification can also only detect the presence or lack of items. I, I like to use an example. Consider a political election. Image of the President of the United States, George W. Bush. It has alternative text. Only one problem. Something happened three years ago. The President of the United States is no longer George Bush. The President of the United States is Barack Obama. Your assistive technology evaluation tool will say, hey, it has alternative text. Pass. It's the wrong alternative text. So this is the, a simple example of the kind of issues we confront. So the good news for all of us in this room, we are all human. The human factor cannot be entirely eliminated. Um, the other thing is, in our workflows, as individuals, we have complete responsibility for some work. But in organizations or when we um, cooperate with others and work with colleagues, 
now we have to think of accessibility as yet another production workflow element. In the same way we think of spell checking, legal compliance, quality assurance was mentioned. Now, accessibility is often, often forgotten, often neglected, but it is part of the production workflow now, or it should be. We're not IBM, our team's a little smaller. Uh, <laughs> There's uh, six of us full time. Andrew Kirkpatrick is, is the director, the program manager for accessibility at, at Adobe Systems. And I know a number of you in the audience and attending this conference have dealt with Andrew directly. Um, he's in Boston, Massachusetts. We're deployed uh, around the country. Um, and people have specialties. My particular specialty, I'm, I'm at the far right over there, happens to be in the creative tools, in design, Adobe Acrobat, Photoshop, that sort of thing. Uh, Pete DeVasto um, is a blind quality assurance engineer who, who lives and works in San Jose. Uh, Matt May is our accessibility evangelist, also very um, knowledgeable about HTML, Flash and Flex. Kieran is in Europe. This is a global issue. Kieran Kaja, another blind quality assurance engineer in London. And Michael Jordan is a new addition, a flash, flex, and video developer. So we've got this core center of expertise, much like IBM uh, discussed. Uh, we have had the pleasure of an intern, Wang Sing Zhu, who um, now that classes are resuming is going to be leaving us, but she's done some very interesting work in measuring color contrast. So the role of the team, I keep hearkening back to what uh, IBM said, but we are also a corporation, so it's not all that unusual to find the same kinds of roles are, are at work here. We spend a lot of time counseling, working with the product developers at Adobe. Our accessibility standard is called AAA, the Adobe Accessibility Standard. I don't know where the third A went, but it's AAA. <laughs> um, the team is responsible in, in seeing that the product teams start to incorporate this standard. Adobe is, is more freewheeling. We, we, we have to get buy-in, and, and sometimes just because something is the right thing to do, doesn't mean it always happens, but you see improvements in our products, and, and this doesn't, doesn't limit itself to accessibility. Those of you who have used Adobe products have probably scratched your head saying, why did it take them so long to put this feature in that product? Um, it, it's just the nature of our development process sometimes. Um, we also do presentations such as uh, this event, supporting events such as this. Uh, providing training materials, collateral, uh, and the like, so that both users of our products and internal um, audience at Adobe uh, can learn more about accessibility. Working hard um, on the various accessibility standards. You've heard a lot of mention today of WCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines from the W3C. Uh, I participate on ATAG. Matt May participates on uh, WCAG and HTML5. PDF. PDF is no longer an Adobe standard. It is an ISO standard, the International Standards Organization. And there is an accessibility standard for PDF that's emerging. Um, and other standards that we'll get into, the Section 508. And the team um, also uh, helps working with our, our system engineers. The, people in the field who deal with our customers and interested parties every day in helping them demonstrate and understand accessibility. This is just a short product list. Uh, again, I'd like to emphasize Mike, Michael Cooper's uh, remark that the, the, the features are often there. We just don't know that they're there, and that's sometimes our fault at, at Adobe, or we're not using them. So. Even a product like um, Adobe Bridge, which is content management for production workflows, asset management, I should say, images and bits of text that go into a publication. Adobe Bridge has a, a method for attaching alternative text 
to images that are stored in Bridge that travels with the image. So you're not always writing the alternative text over and over again. And when we bring this to people's attention, they say, why didn't you tell us? Well, <laughs> maybe we didn't do a better job of telling you, but the information is there. And you know, how do we bring it front and center is certainly information I'd like to take back from you. Uh, but this is a variety of the products. Uh, Adobe Dig Digital Editions is our ebook reader. It had some serious accessibility deficiencies until quite recently. And now the new version, as a result of working with organizations for the blind and the uh, screen reader uh, companies, has, has improved in, in that regard. I mean, what, what, what good is a, an e-book reader if uh, people with disabilities aren't able to use it? Uh, I do want to apologize. I, I, these four points, uh, I've actually repeated two of them blindness and low vision, uh, and I forgot, I, I must have deleted inadvertently uh, the problems of uh, people with deaf. So, je m'excuse, j'ai oublié de mettre... I'm sorry, I forgot to put the, the characters there, but I forgot to put in the points for uh, deaf people or those who can't hear quite well with hearing deficiencies. Um, essentially, again, repetition. These are the issues... Um, that uh, we see that, yes, the, the issues of the blind seem to get the most attention, but we see a number of accommodations that uh, we try to deal with. We try to work with assistive technology, screen readers and the like, but also we try to also build in uh, some of those features, uh, particularly in Adobe Acrobat, Adobe Reader, where there are features such as read out loud, um, or high contrast or reflow that provide accommodation to some of these users looking at PDF documents without having them to rely on a, a screen reader if, if they're away from their screen reader. This allows a blind person essentially to maybe collaborate with a colleague who's not equipped with a screen reader. Privacy and independence is also a factor in all of this. The accessibility standards, um, and I do mention common look and feel. I was, I was involved in common look and feel years ago. Um, things have changed, I know, and, there, and there's a rework. Um, but there were extensive discussions with the government of Canada uh, concerning the appropriateness of, of, of PDF. And when PDF and WCAG began to come together, then the format was accessible, ac acceptable, excuse me, as an alternative not to be considered the primary, but when made available, the government of Canada encouraged the, and acknowledged that you could make it available in an accessible manner. So more working with the uh, assistive technology vendors, I want to bring attention to uh, the third one, NVDA. Uh, an open source screen reader, uh, and Adobe is part of this open source effort. We have funded uh, NVDA, um, and uh, we'll continue to fund them and support them in their efforts, but do work as well with the other commercial vendors. The uh, variety of formats, we are not just about PDF and we are not just about Flash. We do understand XML. SVG, which is not on this slide, is um, began as an Adobe standard. Um, ebook for the emerging uh, ebook standards, we are behind uh, as well. And a word about uh, the, the video accessibility and the fact that we have thrown our support behind the W3 standard uh, TTML, um, formerly known as D. And this is not my area of expertise, I'm just um, conveying some information others have told me about. Um, but the time text XML is the captioning standard uh, we support, which is also supported in the HTML5 specification. And it is not just about Adobe. In the, in the arena of PDF, uh, and that PDF born by, you know, given birth by Adobe and set free uh, into the international community, we're now seeing 
adoption of accessible PDF publishing workflows in, by Microsoft Corporation, and even in the um, open office arena. You don't need Adobe products to produce accessible PDF, and, and we hope we, you know, we, we have this kind of influence with, with other formats that uh, we're closely associated with. You have heard a lot about Section 508. One of the things we do, and, and I do in particular, is publish what are called the, the VPATs. In, in English, VPAT stands for Voluntary Product Accessibility Template. It is the document that we, as a software vendor, and in many cases hardware vendors, but of course we're in the software business, provide to the United States federal government. Now, we are in Canada. Why do you want to hear about another American talking about the US government? The information on this document, though, is useful to everyone. And I was encouraged by earlier questions people had asking about Section 508. Um, and it is true, it is, it is undergoing a, a, a revision. And we probably, they're in a, what's called a, a comment period, notice, the notice of proposed rulemaking. Um, and by the way, we do, our, our government invites the input of other nations, and I know that the Canadian officials are also contributing to the development of uh, Section 508. Uh, it, it's a model that uh, other jurisdictions are looking towards. But the real value for you is you can approach a vendor such as Adobe, such as IBM, such as Microsoft, Apple, and by looking at that VPAT, which breaks down the various accessibility requirements for hardware, for software, for web content, for uh, a kiosk, and says, does your product, does this item do this? Does it comply, doesn't it comply? And how does it comply? And these are very thorough um, uh, forms that uh, we, we do fill out. Not necessarily because we're required to do so, no one is required to publish any of this information, but all of the vendors are quite interested in selling their products to the government. So there's a very strong incentive. And the public sector has seen this kind of leveraging work, not just in the United States, but in Canada, but in, uh, and in Europe and in the United Kingdom as well. Um, so these forms are actually useful to, to all of us. Uh, even if we're not interested in um, you know, uh, dealing with the United States government. I have to maintain them. If, in the event that you find that we're out of sync, a product doesn't appear, uh, please bring it to my attention, and, and we try to correct that situation immediately. Oftentimes, when we're just after a release, you can probably find the draft sitting on my laptop getting prepared for final publication. Uh, so some additional um, resources. We also have a website. Think of it as your portal to um, all things uh, Adobe accessibility. It's very easy to remember, www.adobe.com slash accessibility. It is arranged by product type. It features certain things. There is accessible flash on there, accessible flash video with the closed captioning, with the um, with the um, audio description. Uh, I'm just saying we, we, ha we can support those things too. I let people judge what they, what they will about the technology, but I, I don't want it implied that the current technology for rich internet applications that we provide uh, doesn't support those things. It, it certainly does. Um, the VPATs, the whole list. Um, I, I commend IBM. We, we only have about 110 products we have to concern ourselves with, uh, not 5,000, so that's something. And the new Adobe Accessibility TV channel, a, a video look at some of these tools, and, and the most exciting recent addition has been um, the InDesign. Print production, the print designer who lays out pages for print, but wants to deploy that in an electronic fashion as either accessible PDF, uh, accessible HTML, an, uh, an, e an accessible ebook, 
uh, there are two episodes on the new InDesign 5.5 developed expressly with accessibility issues in mind as influenced by our own in the United States, the Social Security Administration. Um, the, the big accessibility changes uh, and enhancements and improvements were heavily influenced by government participation and of course uh, working with the um, assistive technology vendors and the advocacy groups. And uh, please address all questions to Andrew. No. Um, <laughs> Andrew is, is our director, and as I say, he's, he's quite accessible um, as well, and I've had the pleasure of, of dealing directly with uh, many of you over the years, face-to-face -face or through email. Um, please don't hesitate to contact any, either of us directly with your, your questions. And sometimes that might be the best way, because I don't have all the answers, and I'll have to find somebody who does. So, at any rate, I'd like to thank you for your time, and uh, I gather we have some time for questions then? Thank you. Merci.